You know, people don't understand and, and, and know why I did the things I did because of, you know, my upbringing and, you know, no foundation and dysfunctional home and drug addicts and alcoholics. And, you know, I became this child prodigy and being in the Mecca of basketball in the city, boom, I kind of put the wall up. I really just threw it in the closet. An off-Broadway stage is an unusual place to find a former NBA star. But that's where Kenny Anderson surprised a small audience with his willingness to reveal for the first time a dark part of his childhood. You've got more candor, a little bit more reflective than we're used to seeing in a retired pro athlete. Uh, what, what spurred that? How did that come about? A good friend of mine, Joe Brown, came up with the, you know, the idea of us doing penis monologues. It was a good idea, but at the same time, I had to think about it. You know, I had to say, hey, am I ready to go into, the, into this world? When I sat down and was talking about my life and everything that happened to me, and boom, it just, just shined on me that, you know, maybe I should get this out of me. Maybe I should just tell the world and it'd take a load off me. And what did you say? I admitted I got molested twice, and um, I, was, I would never say it. How old were you when, uh, when you were sexually abused? The first time I was uh, about eight, uh, uh, about eight because I had moved from the neighborhood that we lived in in Queens, and that's when it happened. You know, neighborhood guy on the block. I was like eight, then we moved to Left Rack City at like nine. Then we, that's when we got out of there at nine, and uh, just was, um, it happened again, you know, in my walks of life, you know, youth basketball, you know. I have to say this because I don't want people to, you know, think that, um, it was any of my AAU coaches because it wasn't. You know, I, I want to make it clear that it wasn't no one in my high school, you know, Archbishop Malloy, it wasn't Ernie Loich, it wasn't Lou Dalmano. I paid for Gauchos and I played for Riverside. So it wasn't none of them, you know. But it was someone that was entrusted. He was, in the co he was into the coaching world, yeah. But I don't want to mention his name, but he, his name is going to get mentioned because it has to. I don't think it, it killed me. Like it killed some other kids that, that's been molested. And you can really take a lot, you know, uh, out of a kid for the rest of their lives. But I, I think without, without the fame, without the basketball celebrity notoriety, might have been more difficult for me. Did you even have anyone that you felt you could tell? Nah, you to? nah. You know, my mother was always, you know, trying to pay the bills and do odd jobs. Uh, I was always by myself. I think that's what became, you know, I was, I was always a loner, you know, and I just, me and my basketball in the park. And Your wife didn't know? I told her, and I didn't, wasn't even sure if I was going to tell her, but it was just one of those nights. How I long? Said, uh, I don't know, she knew for about some, some years, three to four years. And then she's like, you think you're going to tell people that? You know what I mean? You got to tell your all. You got to give it your all or it's not worth it. What are you hoping to accomplish by talking about this now? You know, I'm doing my book right now, and this should be out in March, you know, Final Four time. I'm trying to bring it out. Instructions not included. And it's, you know, when you reflect on your life, and just, uh, just let people know that, yo, this is, this is me. This is what happened to me. And, you know, if, if I, like I said, the bottom line, if I can help somebody, if they see Kenny Anderson, you know, got molested, and he's talking about it, now, now people are gonna come out and maybe be, be able to tell their story. You know, I, I wasn't gonna do it, but the trigger went off of me and um, just, you know, it's had to be done.